That brings us to the third real world problem is that these don't typically sit here without any shock and or get used. You know, they're all over the place. They're yep. in front of a kick drum. They're on a floor getting mechanically coupled to the floor, that kind of thing. They're in your hand moving around. They're exactly. Going inside and out of a stand. So how do we make it that we hear the sound and not the actual mechanical vibration? What's going on there? That's the beauty of the 57, the 58, and the Unidyne 3 cart. The, the Unidyne 3 cartridge, which okay, is... Okay, yeah, let's, let's clarify what that yeah, is. So yeah, so the Unidyne cartridge, the Unidyne was the first um, single element directional microphone. Mm -hmm. um, dynamic directional microphone. Okay, uni-dynamic. Yep. Unidirectional dynamic. Yep, Got it. and it was, and you used one element instead of two. And this, okay. this came out, the Unidyne cartridge, we designed it in the late 30s. Okay. And uh, it was in the 55, you know, the fat boy of that. Okay, sure. Um, and uh, it was the first time you could create a unidirectional microphone only using one microphone element. Previously, you had used two okay. and combined. And then and cancel, use cancel one to cancel and the other. And phase and yep. Okay. So, uh, and we did that through this rear entry and phase shift network, mm -hmm. phase, phase shift network, what mm -hmm. we call it. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a Unidyne. And then in the, in the late 60s, we designed the Unidyne 3 cartridge, which was uh, basically a variation of that, but much smaller, mm -hmm. uh, and had what we called a pneumatic shock mount in it. Okay. And the pneumatic shock mount, it was an integral part to the success of, of those microphones and the current microphones today, being the 57 and 58. Uh -huh. okay. uh, a dynamic microphone is inherently an accelerometer, and it's excited very, very easily through vibrations. Right, okay. Um, especially on the same plane of those vibrations entering on the same plane as the diaphragm moves. Okay, right? so, so that means that this kind of movement isn't really isn't affecting the sound too much. Not, we're, yeah, we're not as much concerned about you know, movement, movement of the diaphragm because everything is moving together on this, okay, on this okay. axis. Okay. But we're mostly concerned about the diaphragm moving in this axis. Okay. Um, and that's a lot of handling noise right. happens that way and stand vibrations. And mm -hmm. So the, the, the clever thing about the pneumatic shock mount is uh, it's actually designed in conjunction with the acoustics design of the cartridge. Of course, because you can't, you can't solo one thing. You can't solo anything in a dynamic microphone. Okay. And uh, you, can't, you can't design the shock mount in isolation of designing the acoustics of the microphone right. either. And just to be clear, we're not talking about an external shock mount nope. here. We're, we're talking, talking about, about the, the pumping shock mount inside, inside the, mic. the microphone. Okay. Yep. So if we open this up here, um, there's actually, uh, this thing actually pumps inside of this collar. So, oh, wow. I've never... Never yeah. tried to move that there. You can I move, see. If you move it, you can actually see it pump uh, like a piston okay. inside of this collar here. Huh. And um, keep in mind, there's keeping in mind there's cavities in here that are changing volumes when you pump. When you when you when that when that microphone moves back and forth, uh -huh. um, there's a cavity down here, which okay. is also integral to the proper response of the mic. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. um, but the beautiful part about the pneumatic shock mount, which is unique to only Sure products, we're mm -hmm. only the ones that really have a pneumatic shock mount in them. Okay. Uh, is uh, as vibrations travel up the handle, it actually shrinks a cavity inside of, of this closing ring, inside because the collar. Because the, the body's moving forward and the, and the capsule on yep. the mount is going backwards. Yep. Okay. And there's a cavity here that's shrinking uh -huh. and pushing more air into another cavity, which is underneath the diaphragm. Okay. And that cavity is actually pushing more, putting more pressure mm -hmm. underneath the diaphragm and counteracting the mechanical pressure being induced by that vibration on the other side of the diaphragm. Wow. Okay. Wow. It's a little, it's deep. It's deep, but I mean, the, the basic idea is, is simple. Obviously, the math involved in making that work is it's something stupid, else. Stupid, stupid complex. Stupid complex. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. That's, that's engineering. That's engineering speak. for hundreds and hundreds of pages of equations that you can't even wrap your head around. Yeah. Okay. And, that's, and that's the difficult part of of the pumping shock mount is the pneumatic shock mount is you can't design it outside of just acoustics. You can't you can't design the acoustics of the microphone and then mount it in a shock mount. Right. They're intimately tied together because you have to have that um, that connection through those cavities mm. along with the shock mount yeah. compliance parts. So right. it's it's a it's very complex. Okay. So, so. yeah, it's really fascinating. So. So this entire body design, the entire head basket, the way that the diaphragm is mounted, um, it's easy enough to look at this thing. You know, you can get it for $90 at, at Guitar Center. Mm -hmm. um, you can get it 
fifty dollars off Craigslist. I'm supposed to say that, but that's <laughs> that's, that's the fact of the world. Yep. Um, so you, it's tempting to look at it and say, okay, well, there's a microphone part here. Here's the handle. Um, I it, can do this. Yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, so, but really, everything about this is finely tuned. Absolutely. To to, to make the microphone work in, in all these real world situations, and um, of course, the cliche about SM57s is that you can take them to work during the day and hammer nails and then mm -hmm. sing with it at night. And, and, and that, that didn't happen overnight and it didn't get designed overnight right. either. You yeah. know, it's, uh, it takes years and years to truly develop a good uh, dynamic microphone and to right. do it well. Yeah. And it takes a lot of smart people, a lot smarter than me, um, <laughs> yeah. to, to design these microphones. Right. And uh, there's a reason why it works the way it does uh, mm -hmm. because it's, because we feel that it's the best that, that we can make, mm -hmm. and um, and it's I think it's it stood the test of time. Well, obviously, yeah, it's, certainly it's been on a few albums and yeah, been I've, around for a bit. It's been yeah. around the block a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, so so we've been talking exclusively about the fifty seven, but how much of what we're saying, the basic ideas, how much of that applies to any kind of dynamic mic? Uh, almost all of it does. Okay. I mean, aside from the pneumatic shock mount, which is pretty proprietary to sure. Okay. Um, but the the way the the phase shift network, the actual the concept of phase shift network and directionality mm -hmm. and creating a directional microphone, mm -hmm. uh, we designed that in the '30s and pretty much every dynamic microphone in the world, right. every di directional dynamic microphone in the world, is based on that design. Interesting. Which is, which is pretty cool. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Wild. Well, thank you so much, John. This has been hugely. Uh, mind expanding for me yeah. um, and I certainly have a new appreciation for these these tools that uh you know are, that you are use part, every day exactly yeah so um and maybe I'll even try singing into one rather than hammering nails with them <laughs> <soon, laughs> that would so. be great yeah so, <laughs> thank thanks, you so much thanks for coming out I appreciate it